You sometimes hear people say that they won't be able to breathe easy until a particular problem is solved, or a situation gets resolved. But how many times have you seen the problems of the world get totally solved once and for all? One problem is usually replaced by another. And when that's the case, if you can't breathe easy in the midst of problems, you'll never be able to breathe easy. And that will make the problems more and more difficult to endure. So one of the lessons of breath meditation is that you can choose to breathe in a way that's on your side. You can make the breath your friend. You can breathe easy, even in the midst of difficult situations. Even when you're sick, you can ease the breath. Now, a lot of it has to do with perception. We perceive certain parts of the body as being unresponsive to the breath, that the breath can't penetrate. Actually, the breath penetrates everything. It's an energy. It's a very refined energy. So that's the first perception to hold in mind, that the breath is an energy that can penetrate anything. Even the parts of the body that seem really solid and resistant. The atoms of those parts of the body have space between the atoms, space within the atoms. So why is there not room for the breath to penetrate? So think of these things opening up. Now don't put pressure on those parts. You're not trying to force the breath in there. That makes the breath uneasy. Just think of the sensation as being open to being permeated, even as it is. And hold that perception in mind. Now, I know some people don't like holding perceptions in mind like this. They say meditation should be about seeing things as they are. And here we are using our imagination. But there are so many cases in the world where if you don't use your imagination, you won't see things as they are. Tell a child that the earth revolves around the sun. The child has to use its imagination. Because you look at it, it seems like the sun is revolving around the earth. But when you get a larger picture, you see that, yes, that is the case. The earth is not the center of the universe. The sun is not the center of the universe. It involves expanding your imagination. I remember reading about Herschel, the astronomer who discovered the planet Uranus. He also discovered many, many galaxies in many stages of, of their development, which for him required huge expanses of time, much bigger than anybody had imagined before. And thinking about how far away those galaxies were. You begin to realize that, given that light has a speed, maybe the galaxies he saw were no longer there. They emitted their light many, many years ago and since been destroyed. I remember reading a, an interview that a younger journalist had written about being with the older Herschel. It really blew the journalist's mind. He was this old man with ideas that the young journalist had never conceived. So using your imagination doesn't mean you're making things up. It means you're expanding your sense of what's possible. And here's a particularly useful way of expanding your sense of what's possible. You can have the breath on your side. You can breathe easy in the midst of difficult situations, and those situations become a lot easier to endure. 
you can stick with difficulties for a much longer time. This is especially important now as the pandemic seems to be going on and on and on. I was talking today with someone who was saying she expected it to be just one wave and then to go away. Now it's proving to be a lot longer than she'd expected. And thinking out ahead about how long it might take for the pandemic to go away. Just weighed her down. And I said, that's precisely the problem. You're weighing yourself down with thoughts about things you don't even know. And even if the pandemic goes away, that doesn't mean that's the end of disease, the end of illness, the end of death. These things keep happening. And even before the pandemic started, I was told that on average over 200,000 people die every day. So aging, illness, and death are not going to go away. The inconveniences of the pandemic will be replaced by other inconveniences. So in the midst of all these inconveniences, these difficulties, these challenges, we have to learn how to breathe easy. So use your imagination to help the breath become easy. And think of new ways that the breath comes into the body. You can think of the breath as coming in through the nose, coming through the eyes, the ears. You can think of the breath energy originating inside the body first so that the body can pull in the air that we associate with the breath. And remember, it's the energy in the body that's most important anyhow. Air on its own doesn't do anything. It's the movement of the body that gets the air to come in. And you can perceive that movement starting anywhere. I had a student who had Marfan syndrome. It's a connective tissue disorder. She had studied to be a nurse and made that her specialty, to help other people with the same syndrome. At her funeral, I met a young man who also had morphine. He told me that when he was 13, he had to have a heart operation. And after the operation, the doctors had given him painkillers, and the pain wouldn't go away. So she came to visit him and listened to his problems, and she told him, breathe through your butt. He looked a little embarrassed, but he said it actually worked. That when you can conceive of the breath energy starting at that point in the body, it changes the dynamic inside. What wasn't possible before now becomes possible. So learn to use your imagination to see what way of breathing will be easy. What way of breathing will make it easier to endure long periods of difficulty? Because, as I said, one difficulty ends and another difficulty will come. This is just the nature of life. We go from one challenge to another. And so instead of waiting until the challenges are over, we learn how to breathe easy in the midst. Because after all, as you get older, it's not the case that the challenges will go away, or even that people will be nicer to you as you get older. While practicing my French, I was reading a lot of biographies in French, the famous French people. And one thing that was striking was that oftentimes, as these people got older, and as their position began to falter a little bit, younger people gathered in for the attack. Instead of having a nice, easy old age, they found that they had to fight even harder. And that was just things outside. On top of that, of course, there were the diseases. 
that became more and more numerous as they got older. Well, this is the nature of human life. Things don't get easier. So while you have the energy, and while you have the power of imagination, learn how to use that imagination to perceive the body, to perceive the breath in ways that the breath can be easy. And when the breath is easy, you've got a sense of well-being, and that well-being becomes your strength. So that regardless of what is happening outside, you're not adding unnecessary burdens to yourself by breathing in ways that are, that are difficult constrained. This is one area of your awareness where you do have the ability to exert some control. So make the most of it. Think of the in-breath coming in easily, stopping easily. Going about, going back out easily. That stops easily. The in breath and the out breath flow into each other. Don't squeeze things. Allow the body to have a sense of well being. That way the mind is less burdened, and it's more able to deal with whatever the outside difficulties are, or the inside difficulties are. Because it has this constant source of food that comes from the breath. And John Fung would comment on, on this often, on how the ability to breathe easily is a source of nourishment. You can have all the physical food that you want, and the body can still feel starved if the breath is starved. And there's no one forcing us to breathe in a way that's difficult. There's no breath police. They haven't privatized the breath. It's all yours. So try to realize the full implications of that and expand your sense of the possibilities of what the breath can do. And it will be your friend as long as you're together. <laughs>